thousands and hundreds of miles to go to an art museum for what? Michelangelo! Look at where, where did Michelangelo come from? Where did all this garbage come from? Michelangelo was one of the first ones to make it pretty well famous. With the Sistine Chapel and all that garbage that that man did with the painting. Any likeness of anything that is in heaven above his imagination thought he seen the finger of God being pressed out upon somebody. Making that, what is it, remember that was it a picture with a God or whatever it was? With his finger to Adam? You know, I mean, it just, whatever, see? And that's where it basically was the Catholic Church is the one that actually fomented artwork and graven images, period. Because if you look at anything they've got, they've got artwork and graven images everywhere. And everybody else who fought it, but I've never heard anybody talk about it. About art like that. And what, what did it say in the book of Acts? They burned. They brought their curious arts, yeah. arts and books and burned them. And it was like 50,000 pieces of silver or whatever it was. You know? Hey, I remember when I first, all right, now a good example. First-hand experience. When I had the Boeing experience, you know what I did? I had me a burning party. I had collector item baseball cards that were worth over $3,000. And I had a party and burned them one day. And uh, I never forgot that. I, told my, I was talking to my niece, my brother's daughter. I said, oh, boy, you see, I'm so happy burning these cards up. I didn't care how much money they they were worth. I wasn't going to go and sell them. I was convicted that that was idolatry. It's just like my, when I had uh, a deer heads in my shop. Big giant deer heads. I shot these deer. But I looked at that. I was like, that's idolatry, man. That's nothing but iniquity. So look at what I did, you know. I'm the great hunter, you know. <laughs> Whatever. It's just ridiculous. God delivered me from that, though, because I had a true born again experience. You see? If any man, in Luke chapter 14, come to me and hate not, wait a minute now, this is talking about born again experience now. And I went through this first time. Hate not his father and his mother, his wife and children, and brethren and sisters. Now I'm telling you, brethren is different than sisters. Brethren means men, not sisters, because if you look in the scriptures over and over again, why, why does it say, and his why aren't sisters included, or well, uh, mothers or wives in the word brethren, because brethren should be able to cover it all in, but it's not, see? You ain't going to find one word. The one place, in the, in a, and there's like 500 some times that says brethren, you won't find one that's associated with a woman, okay? But the point is, is this what he says, if you don't hate your father, your mother, your wife, your children, and your brethren, your brothers, sisters, and yeah, his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. That's your own life also. That's why I said you love not your lives unto the death. Our own life. Me and Kathy aren't living our own life down here in Roseville, South Carolina. I can tell you that. But because we have killed our lives and turned it over to God, look what he's done. <laughs> he has done things that I couldn't even imagine to do as far as the way he has us live. The way he has us live every single day. You know, I mean, just it, it's all God's blessing. That's all I can say. And that's because of the fear of God and obedience to the heavenly vision. God could do that with anybody. He could set anybody free. All you got to do is turn your life over to Him completely. Trust in Him with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And then you will be delivered from whatever you need deliverance from. Like I said, though, we're not Totally perfect, but I can tell you one thing, that is a glimpse of how God's going to restore. As far as our little land that we have there that he get, put us in responsibility of. He's the one that makes things grow. Today, mm -hmm. today I actually harvested another watermelon. We harvested a bunch of beautiful orange peppers that were just beautifully ripe and they're so sweet. And, I mean, it's just, and then the grapes. My goodness. Grapes, <laughs> second year, there's grapes everywhere. So, I mean, that's God, though, see, because I, I could, hey, I ain't going to be like Cain, hey, <laughs> here, here, look what I did, God, you know, I mean, basically, no, I, I we give glory to God for that. The chickens, five chickens, we've been getting three eggs a take for about a week, 
And then we got four eggs. Two days. You know, what a blessing. I mean, I, uh, that, that is just, it, it's astounding how God will do it. But, if you hate your own life, you will find the life that God has for you. Anybody will. A man's fault. Now listen to this. Now remember, if you, can, you don't hate these people in your family, you're not his disciple. Period. I don't care who anybody is. I don't care. You can throw the scriptures all day long, but if you don't hate these people that ain't born again, that's what you're talking about now. You're not talking about people that are born again. If my father was born again, he wouldn't say, hey, if any man doesn't hate his father, I ain't going to hate my father if he's born again, or my sister if she's born again, or my brother. Come on. Well, when I first had a born your experience, I remember looking out the picture window of my house after weeks of crying and tears. I said, my God, there ain't nobody saved. Nobody saved at all. My family, anybody that I had contact with, not one person. But you know what I did? I did just like the stupid people did with Jesus. When he healed them, he charged every single one of them except for a couple of instances. Like the Gadarene, he said, hey, go back to your own home. And, tell what things God has done. And he went and proclaimed what Jesus did, Amen. which is what was right. But And then the leper sent to go, go do what Moses required. Yeah, testing. Okay. But almost 99% of the people, you know what he told them? Don't he charged them to tell nobody. Don't go and do anything. Why? Because he was only sent to a certain amount, group of people. He wasn't sent to outside the covenant of God. It's the same way today. See? And that's what I did. When I had a born again experience, boy, I'm going to tell I mean, I, I mean, I had it. Because I was telling everybody about Jesus Christ. And then one person said, boy, well, I remember how he said to me, he goes, boy, you got religion. I said, no, I got Jesus. I got Jesus Christ. Right there. Just like Chris. He's right there. But I, I, I told him, I remember that. I got Jesus Christ. But I, did, I was like everybody else. Like, did he charge not to tell? Hey, how many times did he say he charged him to tell no man anymore that he was the Christ? Several times he told him that. And, and it's the same way today. It ain't no different. But that's the beginning of a born again spirit. You want to let everybody know what good Jesus did to you. And you know what? That's not what he was. That wasn't his intent in the born again experience. Matthew chapter 10, a man's foe shall be of his own household. <laughs> That's what I found out firsthand now. My father and my mother, as beautiful and kind as they are or were, never heard a harsh word or swear word out of either one of them. My dad one time, but basically he was very mor morale in that, in that sense. He lived a very moral life. My mother... Say, she's a very, say, good Catholic. My brother, my sister, same way. My sister was an RN nurse for I don't know how many years. She probably still is doing that stuff, you know? Working in one of the most diabolical, abominable organizations there is on the face of the earth called the health care system. Anybody who works in that system, if you're born again, you would not be in that system. I can guarantee you God will not leave nobody in that kind of a system. Nowhere. But, if you're not born again, Revelation, they repented not of their murders, of their thefts, of their health care system or sorceries. They repented not of it. They think, oh man, we're going to do good. We're going to be like lights in this dark world. No. Come out from among that garbage, that, that filthiness. So it, it, that's not but sorcery, witchcraft, one of the most diabolical. In fact, that's what Satan's going to use to bring about his kingdom into submission and subjection very soon. He already tried a prelim preliminary with the COVID, and he brought a lot of people into bondage and subjection by the fear of death. They were held in their whole lifetimes and subject to the bondage of fear of death. And he's seen how it works because he knows he's going to mimic God. 
and it worked very well. But they've got one coming that's going to be even more profound than what we've already seen. Man's foe shall be of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. He that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And ain't nobody going to shut God with these scriptures. Nobody. You ain't going to pull nothing over in God's eyes. If, God, I don't love my daughter, my, my brother, my, my uh, son, uh, my mother, my father. I don't love them more than you. When you give them more time than you give God, you'll find out. I guarantee you, you're going to find out. When you stay in that day, in the day of judgment, ain't nobody going to shut God. It's going to be such a great light. Ain't no place for the workers of iniquity going to hide at all. Now, he said, He that loveth father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. He that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he, ta and he that taketh not his cross and falleth after me is not worthy of me. And he doesn't mean to just walk around with a cross. He's talking about what happened on the cross. What put Jesus Christ on the cross? Our sins. Our iniquities. But it's, it, it's very clear he that taketh not his cross. Meaning you crucify the flesh every single day. And it's a blessing to do that. How did Christ suffer? There's only one place that said he suffered besides the cross. Now. And being tempted. He suffered. He suffered through temptation. Why? Because he killed the flesh. He put it, crucified it before he got to the actual cross. He crucified the flesh with its effects as he had to. Mm -hmm. And they were to follow in his steps. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I, I really, I thank God that he's got to be focused on Jesus and his life and the way he did things. Because that's the only way we're going to follow in his steps. We're going to be like him. Every man has a hope in him. Sure. Purifies himself even as he is, he is pure. And everyone that has forsaken houses or brethren or sisters or father or mother or children or lands for my name's my name sake shall receive a hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. Now, Luke chapter 12. And he said also to the people, when you see a cloud rise out of the west, straightway you say, there cometh a shower. And so it is. And when you see the south wind blow, you say, there will be heat. And it cometh to pass. You hypocrites. Isn't it interesting how I talk to them though? You say, man, you, 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 uh, listen now, you guys are all, you're all doing this now. You hypocrites. You can discern the face of the sky and of the earth. But how is it that you do not discern this time? See, that's what I'm talking about now, this time. Not the time to come. This time that we're in right now. And there's a, there's a multitude of people out here. I mean, whatever. They, they, they call themselves Christians. That don't discern the time that we live in. Again, Matthew 13. The kingdom of heaven is like unto a net. It was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind. Which, when it was full... They drew it to shore and sat down and gathered the good in the vessels, but cast the bad away. So shall it be this time, in this time we live in. So shall it be at the end of the world. The angels shall come forth. It ain't just talking about the angels up in heaven now. The ministers shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just. We've just seen that happen here recently. Somebody that was wicked. Seven from among the just. Now if you don't buy it, I, that doesn't matter to me. I watched it firsthand. I cut that wicked person off years ago. But all of a sudden, it just kept coming, you know, whatever. He shall sever the wicked from among the just. That reminded me of what, what God put in my heart about Malachi. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. And the Lord hearkened and heard it in a book of remembrance. Now, this is only if you fear God. They that feared the Lord 
Not just talking about Jesus. You fear God, spake off of one another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it, and the book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and thought upon his name or his authority, his power. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord, in the day when I make up my jewels. And I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Then shall you return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. That's what I'm talking about. By their fruits, you're going to know who's serving God and who's not serving God. It doesn't matter. Right? That's, that is the judgment line. That is the plummet. That is the straight and narrow way that Jesus talked about. Now, it's interesting because I use this Scripture over the past five years. Proverbs 10, verse 16. The labor of the righteous tendeth to life. But the fruit of the wicked is what? Sin. To sin. Mm -hmm. The fruit of the wicked to sin. See, they're, they're, now, now, now you got fruit there. But their fruit is to sin. Our fruit is holiness, righteousness, the fear of God, the fruit of the Spirit. Yeah, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness. Now, you don't bypass none of that. But the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. That's the main one right there, truth. The greatest of these is truth. Or charity. Right. Proverbs chapter 11. The fruit of the righteous is a, tree of life. is a tree of life. And then it said, uh, in Matthew, I had it again, 19. And everyone that has forsaken their houses, brothers, sisters, father, mother, shall receive a hundredfold and shall inherit eternal life. Or everlasting life. Matthew 7. By their fruits. You shall know that. And it's not just to know who's a false prophet or who's not. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. And we see the inwardly the ravening going on for years where we were living at one point. I mean, just ravening. Do men gather Grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth. Wait a minute now. It brings forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Which is what I just said here. The fruit of the wicked is to bring forth evil fruit or sin. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth, wait a minute now, every, no, wait, you're going to wait for people to bring forth fruit when you don't have it? Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is, just like John the Baptist said, this is Jesus in Matthew chapter 7, is hewn down and cast into the fire. Now, I still say, it's just like you said, the tongue is a, a world of iniquity set on the course of nature and set on the fire of hell. That's part of what people are turned over to before the actual fire of hell. Before they're actually in the flames of torment like the rich man and Lazarus. Wherefore, okay, every tree that bringeth not forth good fruits you now cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. Not everyone. This is the point I was getting to before. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord. So as you're in the kingdom of heaven, you know there's millions, hundreds of millions of people out here talking about Jesus Christ. Right. And yet, ain't one of them. That this is what he's talking about here. Not everyone that says, Lord, 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 shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. And this is really, this one here has always caught my attention. These are the very religious people of our day. 
like they were with Jesus, with the Sadducees, the Pharisees, any of them. They knew the law of Moses, but even Jesus looked at them and said, not, not one of you keep the law. <laughs> you know? Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? You know what a shock that's going to be to these people? Now, the other people I mentioned as Kathy on the way here, I said other people, uh, they flat out rejected Jesus Christ. These people, they profess that they know God, but in their work, they deny Him. Being abominable and unbelieving and out to every good work, reprobate or void of judging or discerning between what's right and what's wrong, what, what's good and what's evil. They call good evil and evil good. That's the generation we're in. Many will say to me that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works. And then when I profess unto them, the first word to come out was Master, so devastating. He said, I never knew you. Never. Wow. Wait a minute now. These are people that proclaim the name of Jesus Christ. I never knew you? That's fearful. Depart from me that work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded on the rock, or Jesus Christ. The same rock that Jesus said to Peter, upon this rock will I build my church, and that was the rock of Revelation. Nothing can be given to any man except he be given from heaven. above right. or heaven. True. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man. And I'm not playing with words. Because I mentioned this one day was Ron about the street he lived on. Wayside. He, he, he caught it right away when I said, man, I said, yeah, it's like that, that word wayside, boy, that's not a good word. He goes, I know, I know. He goes, well, I'm going to be out of there pretty soon. I said, yeah, well, I mean, I, I just, I didn't even know it was where the name of the street, when I actually seen that on that ad that time, to let him know about the place for rent. But then when, but he actually acknowledged it. He said, man, yeah, that's it. He said, I know, I'm not going to be there much longer. I said, yeah, well, look who was living right next door, on the wayside. Kind of Some people that were very, uh, they proclaim you know Jesus Christ, yeah, but they don't. Definitely In their sense. works, they deny him. That's all. Uh, and and uh, everyone that heareth the sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. That's a reminder. What's that road out here? Sand <laughs> and drag. Right. Right. I'm not playing with words now. I'm just saying that. I would think twice about and we're not super just serious. things like that. You know what I mean? God don't play with his words. It, it, this ain't reverse psychology I'm trying to on you. Okay? I'm just letting you know. That's I mean, it, Anyways, and the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat that upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Now, in Matthew chapter 12, okay, this is a scripture that Jonathan often quotes. He has quoted this quite a bit in the past. And whosoever speaketh the word against the Son of Man shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall never be not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and its fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. See, there's got to be fruit. This ain't something that's going to appear down the road. There's got to be fruit. You know what? You know what? God, the Word of God is a seed, right? And, and, and it talks about the pure Word of God or the pure seed. Incorruptible. Incorruptible. Okay? Is that seed going to produce fruit? Or do you got to wait for some? some kind of thing to happen for that to produce fruit. It will produce fruit that it's intended to do if it's on one of the four grounds that it's talking about. 
Oh, <laughs> yes, it's Jesus now. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and its fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by its fruit. Matthew 12, verse 34. Oh, generation of vipers! My God. I mean, this is Jesus talking to these people, calling them snakes. Vipers. How can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. That's how you're going to know somebody that's got a good heart. Or an evil heart. The good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth good things. An evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. And I don't, like Ralph said, evil is unbelief. No, it goes beyond unbelief. It ain't unbelief when you're committing adultery. <laughs> it ain't unbelief when all, any kind of sin. It ain't unbelief. You might not believe that it's a sin, but it's still, the evil is not to. The uh, finality is unbelief. That's a bunch of nonsense. See, that's like I just thinking about it in the garden. It was a tree of what? Good and evil. The knowledge of good and evil. But they not believe in the truth. It's just one is truth, the other one is not truth. Good, evil. Oh, generation of vipers, how can you be an evil speak good things out of the abundance of heart? Tomorrow speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words will be condemned. It's pretty simple. That's why our words should be few. But it said, I David said, I will order my conversation aright. David said, Keep thy servant back from presumptuous sins and let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be innocent and I shall be free yeah, from committing the great transgression. Mm -hmm. Then what did he say? Yeah, that the meditation of my heart and the so words of my so mouth so. be acceptable unto thee, O God, my Lord and my strength. Or, words fitly spoken are like apples of gold and pictures of silver. So it's right to speak the right things. But like you brought out about the evil, you know, the tongue. <laughs> It's an unruly member unless you have been born again. Then God starts to control the way we talk, the way we think, and the way we react or act in any situation. Matthew chapter 13. And he spake these things out of them in peril, and they saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. Here we go now to the seed. We're not in seed sowing time. I do not have any hope for not one person out in this world to be saved. Not now. We're not, what Jesus said, you do not deserve this time. Oh, I got hope for my uh, son, my mother, my daughter, my brother, or my neighbor, I got hope for him. The Bible says hope deferred. It's going to make your heart sick. Period. This is no time for seed sowing. If nobody's born again, if they're not born again now, they ain't going to be. Somebody said, well, you can't say that. Do you sow seed in harvest time? Simple answer. No. There's rain and harvest and snow in summer. So is honor unseemly to a fool. Wait a minute now. There's rain and, and harvest. That means there ain't no rain during the harvest. When the harvest time comes, the rain's cut off. I'll get to that. You might, hey, I, it doesn't matter. Your heart's going to be sick. If you think that some people out here are going to get saved, then whatever, you can you go do it. Hey, just like they said, Ephraim joined his eyes, leave him alone. Behold, a sower went to sow, for, for it to sow. 
Now we're talking about fruit now. And we sowed, some seeds fell by the what? Wayside. Wayside. There's that word again. And the fowls came and devoured them up. And that's about what was going on over there, basically, when I mentioned that. And some fell on stony places, and when they had not much earth, forthwith they sprung up, because they had no depthness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, because they had no root, and they withered away. Wait a minute. Withered away. What, I, didn't I read that about something? Withering? <clears throat> the, fig the fig tree withered mm -hmm. away. Spring withereth is another place, too. All right. <clears throat> and some fell along among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But other fell into the only kind of ground that's going to bring forth any kind of fruit. It's good ground. It brought forth fruit. Some a hundredfold, some thirty and some, or some hundredfold, sixty and thirty. We have the ears to hear, let them hear. And the disciples, disciples came on him and said, Hey, why speak a style unto them in parables? He answered them and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but unto them is not given. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away even that he has. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they, seeing not, and hearing, they hear not. Neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which said, By hearing you shall hear, and shall not understand. Talk to people that ain't born again about the spiritual things of God, and they ain't going to understand it. Darkness they can't understand. It not. Right, exactly. That's the scripture you use a lot. The darkness comprehended it not. For the, uh, it says, And seeing you shall see and not perceive. Mm -hmm. For this people's hearts wax gross and their ears are dull of hearing. And this is ama always amazed me. And their, their eyes, they yeah, have yes. closed. Lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears. It should understand with the heart and should be converted. I should heal them. That's all in God's hands. It ain't no man's hand. That's in God's hands who he decides who's going to open up their heart and not. But blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see and have not seen them. To hear those things which you hear and have not heard them. Hear you therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. Wow. That, this is which he received by the wayside. But, he that received the seed in stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, and Anon with joy receiveth it. 